Friends, this is first question of our AZ305 exam practice question series. You plan to deploy an Azure web app named App1 that will use Microsoft Entra ID authentication. App1 will be accessed from the internet by the users at your company. All the users have computers that run Windows 11 and are joined to Entra ID. You need to recommend a solution to ensure that the users can connect to App1 without being prompted for authentication and can access App1 only from company-owned computers. Make a note, they can only access it from company-owned computers. What should you recommend for each requirement? And the first requirement is the users can connect to App1 without being prompted for authentication. Your options are, an Entra ID managed identity, an Entra ID app registration, Entra ID application proxy. And friends, to ensure that users can connect to App1 without being prompted for authentication, you should recommend an Entra ID app registration. By using an Entra ID app registration, you can configure single sign-on, which allows users to authenticate once and access multiple applications without being prompted for credentials again. Since the user's computers are already joined to Entra ID, they can leverage SSO for seamless access to App1. Now the next requirement was, the users can access App1 only from company-owned computers. Your options are Entra ID Administrative Unit, Azure Policy, Conditional Access Policy, Azure Application Gateway. And folks, to ensure users can access App1 only from company-owned computers, you should implement conditional access policies in Entra ID. This way, you can enforce policies that restrict access to App1 to devices that are marked as compliant or joined to the Entra ID. Let's look at next question. You have an Azure subscription that contains 300 virtual machines that run Windows Server 2022. You need to centrally monitor all warning events in the system logs of the virtual machines. What should you include in the solution? Now your first part is resources to create an Azure. And your options are a storage account, a search service, an event hub, a log analytics workspace. Friends, things you would need to do to achieve the solution of central monitoring is to create a log analytics workspace. A log analytics workspace in Azure Monitor is the appropriate solution for collecting and analyzing data from multiple sources, including the system logs from virtual machines. By creating a log analytics workspace, you can configure the virtual machines to send their system logs to this workspace, where you can then query and monitor for warning events centrally. Now the next part is configuration to perform on the virtual machines. What would you do on the virtual machines to achieve this configuration? And your options are configure continuous delivery, install the Azure monitor agent, modify the membership of the event log readers group, create event subscriptions. And folks, the correct answer here would be to install the Azure Monitor Agent on the virtual machines. Azure Monitor Agent collects performance metrics, logs, and custom data from your virtual machines. Installing this agent is essential to gather the system logs and send them to the log analytics workspace. Now the next step that you would follow in this setup would be to configure data collection to send the system logs to the log analytics workspace and then create queries and alerts within the log analytics workspace to monitor the warning events in the system logs. Next question, you plan to deploy an Azure SQL database that will store personally identifiable information, PII. You need to ensure that only privileged users can view the PII what should you include in the solution? Your options are transparent data encryption, which is TDE, dynamic data masking, data discovery and classification, role-based access control, which is RBAC. 
you should include dynamic data masking in your solution to ensure that only privileged users can view personally identifiable information in Azure SQL database. Now, dynamic data masking helps prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data by enabling customers to designate how much of the sensitive data to reveal with minimal effect on application layer. It's a policy-based security feature that hides the sensitive data in the result set of an query over designated database fields while the data in the database is not changed. Let's now look at why other options are incorrect. Now, option A, TDE encrypts the entire database at rest. It protects against unauthorized access to the physical files and helps secure the database from threats like disk theft. However, TDE does not control who can view the data once they have access to the database through legitimate means. Now, option C, data discovery and classification is a tool for identifying and classifying sensitive data within your database. It helps you understand where your PII is located and categorize it appropriately. However, it doesn't enforce any access controls or masking on its own. Option D, role-based access control is used to manage access at cloud plane level, folks. And here we are talking about access at data plane level. So again, an incorrect choice. Friends, I hope now you understand why option A, C, and D are incorrect. But if you still have any doubts, please post them in the comment section and I'll try to address them as soon as possible. Fourth question. You have an application that is used by 6,000 users to validate their vacation requests. The application manages its own credential store. Users must enter a username and password to access the application. The application does not support identity providers. You plan to upgrade the application to use single sign-on authentication by using a Microsoft Entra application registration. Which SSO method should you use? And your options are SAML, header-based, OpenID Connect, and password-based. Friends, key to answer this question is users must enter a username and password to access the application. And application manages its own credential store. So for that very reason, you will need to use password-based SSO in this case. Let's head to Microsoft documentation to understand this in more detail. So friends, there are several ways you can configure an application for SSO. Now choosing an SSO method depends on how the application is configured for authentication. Let's go through this flowchart to understand how and what parameters you need to take into consideration when you are deciding the SSO method for your application. So folks, if you are developing a new application, yes, you should start looking at OpenID Connect and OAuth. But if you are not developing a new application, then comes, are you ready to configure single sign-on for an existing app? If you are, then yes. Is your app in the cloud or on-premise? If it is in the cloud, then you need to think about whether my application supports a SAML based protocol or not. If it supports, then you will choose SAML based authentication. If it does not support, then you will see whether your app authenticates with username or password. If it supports, then you can see you will choose password based authentication. If it doesn't support, you will disable it before looking at other parts of this flowchart, let's look at what you will do if your existing application is an on-premise based application. Now, if your application is an on-premise based application, again, you will see whether it supports SAML based protocol. If it supports, then you will choose SAML based authentication. And if it does not support SAML based authentication, then you will choose, or basically you will see whether your app can authenticate with IWA. If it supports IWA, then you will choose IWA. And if it does not support IWA, then you will check whether your app supports authentication with HTTP headers. 
if it supports http headers then you will choose header based and if it does not support then the last option is you will need to see whether your app can authenticate with username and password if it supports you will choose password based if it does not then basically your authentication will be disabled so folks this is a, a very clear flowchart telling you what are the parameters you need to take into consideration when deciding which of the authentication method you need to configure for SSO of your application. Now, the key thing that you can get from this configuration flowchart is if you are developing a new application, then the recommendation is OpenID correct and OAuth. But if your application is like already existing, uh, so there are different parameters that you need to take into consideration. If it is a cloud based application, then the first choice is SAML authentication, which you would have seen at many places uh, in your organization. But if the application doesn't support SAML based authentication, then the next option is to choose password based authentication. Now, if the application is on premise, then basically again, the first preference is SAML based authentication or the second preference is your any of your identity provider. Basically, you integrate it with your identity provider and then the next one is header based. And finally, I would say the password based authentication is the last option that, sh that you should look for because even though you will configure it as an SSO, but it won't be a true SSO because you will have to input your uh, username and password every time. However, the key requirement in this question was that the application does not support identity providers. So IWA was out of picture and then uh, the application had its own credential store. And the one of the requirement was users must enter a username and password to access the application. That is the reason we have chosen password based authentication. So friends, I hope you now understand why option D password based is the correct answer here. Question number five, you are developing an app that will read activity logs for an Azure subscription by using Azure functions. You need to recommend an authentication solution for Azure functions. The solution must minimize administrative effort. What should you include in the recommendation? And your options are an enterprise application in Entra ID, application registration in entra id system assigned managed identities shared access signatures or sas system assigned managed identities are correct answer here because they provide a secure automatically managed identity for azure functions eliminating the need for manual credential management and reducing administrative effort they integrate seamlessly with Azure services, ensuring secure access to resources like activity log without the need for additional configuration or secret handling. Now folks, again, let's head to Microsoft documentation to understand the different types of managed identities. So folks, there are basically two types of managed identities. One is the system assigned and the other one is user assigned. Now, some Azure resources such as virtual machine allow you to enable a managed identity directly on the resource, which is what is system assigned. When you enable a system assigned managed identity, a service principle of a special type is created in Microsoft Enter ID for the identity. The service principle is tied to the lifecycle of that Azure resource. When the Azure resource is deleted, Azure automatically deletes the service principle for you. By design, only that Azure resource can use this identity to request tokens from Microsoft Intra ID. You authorize the managed identity to have access to one or more services. The name of the system assigned service principle is always same as the name of the Azure resources it is created for. For a deployment slot, the name of its system managed identity is app name slash slot slash slot name. So folks, I hope you now understand what is system assigned managed identity. Let's now look at user assigned managed identity. You may also create a managed identity as a standalone Azure resource. You can create a user assigned managed identity and assign it to one or more Azure resources. 
when you enable a user assigned identity a service principle of a special type is created in microsoft entra id for the identity the service principle is managed separately from the resource that uses it this is the key difference between the system assigned and the user assigned system assigned is assigned to that particular resource and gets deleted when that resource is deleted but the user assigned is managed separately and it doesn't get deleted when the resource get deleted basically user managed identity can be used by multiple resources you authorize the managed identity to have access to one or more services so folks you can go through this documentation uh, whose link was already on your screen if you want to understand more about system assigned managed identity and user assigned managed identity i would highly recommend you to understand these topics in more detail as there can be a lot of variation of just the example questions that i am bringing in front of you sixth question of the series you have an azure subscription that contains thousand resources you need to generate compliance reports for the subscription the solution must ensure that the resources can be grouped by department what should you use to organize the resources your options are azure policy and tags application groups and quotas resource groups and role assignments administrative units and azure lighthouse friends this is one of the easiest questions that you will get in azure solution architects expert exam to generate compliance report and ensure resources can be grouped by department you should use azure policy and tags friends i think this question is more applicable to az 900 exam it is so simple it is just the basic concept that everyone who is working with azure should know now using azure policy and tags you can apply tags to resources to group them by department and you create policies to enforce tagging rules ensuring all resources have the necessary tags for proper categorization and compliance reporting next question you have an azure subscription that contains an azure blob storage account named store1 you have an on premise file server named server1 that runs windows server 2022 server1 stores 500 gb of company files you need to store a copy of the company files from server1 in store1 which two possible azure services achieve this goal and your options are an azure logic apps integration account an azure import export job an azure analysis services on premise data gateway an azure batch account azure data factory folks the two services that you can use to achieve the goal of copying the files from an on premise server to azure storage account are import export job and azure data factory now azure import export job allows you to transfer large amounts of data to azure blob storage by shipping hard drives to an azure data center this method is efficient for transferring large data sets like the 500 gb of company files and azure data factory is a data integration service that enables you to create a schedule and orchestrate data workflows you can use azure data factory to create a pipeline that copies files from your on premise server to the azure blob storage account so folks that's all for part 1 of the az 305 exam question and answer series i hope you have enjoyed all these questions that i have covered in this part if you have then do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel